thank you, Rana sir. And thank you, Ella, very much. Uh, I would like to really dedicate uh, our today's program to Khalid Hamid Farouki. Uh, it's really choking to talk about him, but uh, such is life. Uh, okay, welcome everyone and uh, good afternoon. And it's uh, good to have you all. I will I will put, put a small presentation together. And uh, what I will do is like 35, 40 minutes, I will take you through this. And like always, then we will have a open discussion in which uh, every participant can express her or his views and ask questions. Uh, so we really make it an interactive and two-way street, uh, a real dialogue in every sense. Now at the upfront, I would like to establish that uh, we are against war. We are against the war in Ukraine. It shouldn't have happened. It was a miscalculation. And like every other war, it is devastating people and it has impact on people, on their lives. It is causing a lot of destruction and it's causing a lot of human suffering. And like every war, a lot of people are getting rich in destroying it. And then even more people will get rich in rebuilding it. So our objective today is really not to just, just have subjective judgments, but to present an analysis to you, which is based on historical evidence, uh, the reasons and the interests behind the conflict. Now it's up to you, up to us at the end of this discussion, to draw our own conclusions because everyone has right to his own opinion. Uh, I would, before I start, would like to just uh, run this very short uh, clip. It is a few seconds and it is in German. Uh, it is about uh, Hans Dietrich Genscher, sitting uh, right hand uh, uh, background. He was the minister uh, at that time, minister, foreign minister of Germany. And he is with Baker, who is foreign minister of uh, US. And they are talking to the press, guaranteeing that they will not expand NATO towards the East. Here you go. In Gegenzug zur deutschen Einheit verspricht der Westen, die NATO nicht weiter nach Osten vorrücken zu lassen. In Washington macht der damalige Außenminister weitreichende Zusagen. Wir waren uns einig, dass äh, nicht die Absicht besteht, das NATO-Verteidigungsgebiet auszudehnen nach Osten. Das gilt übrigens nicht nur in Bezug auf die DDR, die wir da nicht einverleiben wollen, sondern das gilt ganz generell. Ein Versprechen von kurzer Lebensdauer. Die ersten osteuropäischen Länder werden in die NATO aufgenommen. Außenministerin Albright strahlt, als sie ihre Kollegen aus Polen, Tschechien und Ungarn im Arm hält. Ein bedrohlicher Griff aus Sicht Moskaus. Doch man ist zu schwach, um zu reagieren. So this was just, just one of the many evidences, uh, because we are talking about historical evidences. So this is one of the evidences that uh, uh, what West and NATO had promised uh, Soviet Union or Russia at that time. And this is where actually this, this whole misery started, if you wish. But if you look at really the, the, the history of Russia and Ukrainian, Ukraine, it, is, it spans over something like a, a, a thousand years. Uh, but the real unrest uh, started really uh, uh, ended actually when the Soviet Union was created. So it had a very messy and very uh, unrestful kind of history uh, until the USSR. And uh, we know about uh, KVN and Rus, which was a governing system in the 10th, 10th century. And that uh, went through until the uh, breakup of the uh, Soviet Union of USSR. And you saw just this clip that the promise if they break up, there will be no expansion of uh, NATO towards the East. Uh, at the time of breakup, uh, you all will recall that uh, uh, Ukraine was the third largest uh, uh, possessor of nuclear weapons, nuclear arms. And at that time, USA, UK, and Russia, they uh, traded a nuclear deal or an, a weapons deal with the Ukraine. They said, if you, we will respect your independence, we will accept you as a sovereign nation if you get rid of your all uh, uh, weapons, nuclear weapons. They did, and then you know, then the president. Uh, Leonid Kushman came, Viktor uh, Yunokovych came, uh, there were elections, uh, Viktor Yushchenko was poisoned, he won the election together with the 
uh, Yulia Tomashenko, and they requested actually first time in 2008 uh, NATO uh, to be uh, to accept them as as a member of the NATO. Now at that time, George W. Bush, of course, he was very happy to welcome them, but Germany and France they were totally against it because they did not want to provoke Russia and they wanted to keep the promise they had made to, to Soviet Union at that time. Then Viktor Yanukovych was elected in 2010. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then we had- uh, Excuse me, excuse me, uh, wait, but sir, uh, your uh, screen is uh, uh, not uh, running. Yeah, 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 Can yeah. You, no, this is the video actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. I, I was yeah. deliberately having that, okay. yeah. like because I was, I was talking through some of the historical facts which are not written actually on, uh, uh, on, on the slide. Uh, but, but anyway, when, uh, when uh, we had uh, Tomoshenko announce Ukraine's neutrality after he was elected, and in two thousand and eleven. Uh, she was arrested and, and we had the protests and so on and so forth. And the real uh, revolution, Medan revolution started when Yanukovych uh, refused to sign the 213 deal uh, with the uh, with, uh, with European Union. Now I come back to, so I was giving this, this, this history. And this is an, an important point. There is also the support of fascists because when this whole Medan revolution started at that time, U.S. was very quick to support all the fascist groups, arm them and train them in, in Ukraine and use their nationalism against Russia. And this was exactly the same kind of repeat as they used the, the Mujahideen in Afghanistan using, using Islam against Soviet Union to disintegrate them because they are godless communists and so on and so forth. Here, the equivalent of Mujahideens were the fascists because they were the people, if you gave them the nationalistic uh, flag, they will go against uh, Russia, against Soviet Union, and so on and so forth. So, and this history actually goes back to, to, the, to, to the Second World War, when in, uh, in, in, in 1941, the operation, some of you might recall, Barbarossa was started by the Nazis, and their plan was to conquer Western Soviet, Soviet Union and implement uh, what they called at that time a Lebensraum for the ethnic Germans. And the people who cooperated with them were the Ukrainian upper echelons, who were, most of them were at that time fascists or, or supporters, of, supporters of Nazis. And the groups which really who were active now, uh, which played a big role in the Medan revolution, it was led by them and supported by the USA. They were like uh, Suboboda, uh, National Corps, Yarosh, the right sector and uh, OUN, which was organization of uh, Ukrainian unity. So these were the, but now coming back to this, this war uh, and to my slide, it seems if we look at the propaganda and the news, it's essentially a war of propaganda. If we look at this whole discussion now in the press, it looks like that Russia has not attacked Ukraine, which is wrong, but it feels like that it has attacked USA, it has attacked Europe, NATO, pretty much most of the world. And there is a lot of talk about the war of uh, about uh, war crimes, about mass murder, human rights abuses, crimes against humanity, systematic viol violence against men, women and children, destruction of hospitals, so on and so forth. But the thing is, this is how the manipulation is done. But all these crimes and many more, they have taken place in every war. It doesn't matter who started that war and who led this war, all these crimes have been, and again, I am not saying two wrongs make one right, or one war is worse than the other, or uh, uh, it's no way trying to justify what Russia is doing, but it is just because NATO and West is taking such a high moral ground and they try to preach the peace and equality and democracy to the world, we have to hold this mirror to them to say, hey guys, listen, this all is happening. Yes, it is all happening in Ukraine, but you guys have done it many, many times before all over the world. Uh, let me move forward. Now, some visual representation of some of the things, I will leave this for just two seconds. Every single picture here speaks volumes 
and there is no one, nowhere Russia or Soviet Union involved. They are all wars started by the West and the NATO. And this is the kind of situation we have created, but this has all faded away in our memories. It doesn't make to the press anywhere. It, 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 nobody talks about them anymore. Now, because this war started, many, uh, some liberal press started making some comparisons. Now, if we compare to uh, just second Iraq war, 665,000 death, death, deaths in a war which was totally based on lies. Death of 1 million children because of sanctions. And the same lady Albright, uh, the foreign secretary just saw, it, saw in the video clip, she was asked in an interview that a million Iraqi children have died because of sanctions and lack of medicine and baby food and so on and so forth. She paused for a moment and she said, this is the price we have to pay for democracy. Now, Mrs. Albright, you did not pay this price at all. The one million Iraqi babies and children paid that price, not Albright. Uh, and since 2001 alone, the US and its allies have dropped over 337,000 bombs and missiles, which average on 46 per day on nine countries. And this is what FAIR Observer has been reporting. As I said, historical evidence reported by the capitalist press, reported by the mainstream media. After the World War II, there have been 248 armed conflicts in the world, and US has started 201, which is 81% of them. And that has caused casualties up until 2015 of 30 million people. Jump to the last point, the lies I talked about Iraq, they talked about the yellow cake with the uranium, all fabricated story, Colin Powell with his test tube at the UNO, and Tony Blair saying that Saddam Hussein is going to attack with chemical weapons on UK within 45 minutes. So this is what we have, we have gone through. And this is war, but in peacetime, American forces in Japan, they are there to keep peace. They are not fighting any war. But if we look at their record, in 2016, a report was published, which said five, over 5,000 criminal offenses between 72 and 2009, among them are 25 murders, 385 burglaries and so on and so forth, including rapes and so on and so forth. And not to forget the covert operations, regime changes, target killings, liquidations. And we talk about Philippines, Nicaragua, Chile, Iran. I mean, you name it, <laughs> There's the list of uh, these countries where these uh, assaults have been created and these crimes have been committed is very, very, very wrong. Then comes the linguistic manipulation. If, we, if West or US or NATO starts a war, they always use a very, very different language. Or if Israel attacks uh, Palestinians, a very different language is used. They always say they, they are there for preservation of human rights. They are there to bring freedom and democracy. Uh, if people die, that's simply collateral damage. We use the smart weapons to avoid, avoid casualties. We believe in embedded journalism. We, we are there to liberate oppressed people. We want to get rid of dictators and the dictators are put into governments in the first place by them. Uh, it, and they always say inter international community against a common enemy. Even if the hundred countries are against that war, they still, these four or five countries or 20 countries, they call themselves international community. But if any other war starts, which is not started by them or which is not in their interest, then it's a murderous war, it's genocide and war crimes, crimes against humanity, mass graves and indiscriminate killings, innocence. I mean, you name it, you have a very different kind of reporting. As I mentioned, Palestine, if, if Israel attacks them or they demonstrate the clashes, violations, confrontations, raids, then there is nothing of any other sort. And we all know the stories about Raymond Davis. You might have read his book, Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, how those journalists or, or just common people who have been trying to expose the truth, how they have been treated uh, by, by, the, by these powers. And last but not least, when the refugees come after this war to the West, uh, then if they are coming from the Middle East or Syria or Iraq, or Afghanistan, our values are in danger. We should be careful who are we letting in. They are re economic refugees. Look at them, they have iPhones with them. How could they be refugees? 
And, and, but this is the kind of, but when they come from Ukraine, they are one of us. Others are not one of us. Now it is terrible form of racism to even to differentiate between those people who have run away from whose homes, I mean, total sympathy with Ukrainians who have lost their property, their homes, their loved ones, their, their homes destroyed, their, their lives turned upside down, absolutely wrong. And we have full sympathy, sympathy with them. But try to compare those in a way like, uh, like, like my misery or misery of uh, someone because of his color skin is, is, is severe or more severe than the, uh, some, some, someone else. Now, talking about the agendas behind this, one of the agenda obviously was and is to get uh, Ukraine so quickly, as quick as possible into the UAE. So they, it is uh, rush, rush, rush. They have been accepted as a candidate. Turkey applied in 1987. Of course, they are not one of us. Uh, so they are still waiting since uh, 1987 to be uh, accepted as the, as the member. They probably never will. And this happened despite the fact that just, just weeks before the war, it's not like 10 years, 20 years ago, just weeks before this uh, uh, Russia attacked uh, Ukraine, uh, end of 19, uh, 2021, Ukraine was ranked 122nd out of 180 countries on Transparency, Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, which was second lowest in Europe after Russia. The Heritage Foundation in 2022 Index of Economic Freedom placed Ukraine 44th out of 45 European countries, even below Russia, but just above Belarus. But they, but suddenly they, they qualify to become... Now let's put another perspective to that. Uh, the threats, the arm threats, the, 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 the wars. If we look at the expenditure of 1920, uh, sorry, 2022 of top 10 countries in military expenditures, US alone has spent seven, seven, $778 billion on, on military expenditures. The next nine countries all together added from China down to number 10, South Korea, they have spent less than the only power in the world, which is 778. And this does not include NATO expenditures, by the way. Now, NATO's 2021 military budget was 1.6 billion plus some other. Uh, and since 2014, it's not the recent number, it's since to US has already, as I said, they have been putting, pouring money in, pouring arms in, pouring military aid and training camps, et cetera. Uh, that, that all has been happening. And lately, the 13 billion aid package, uh, which was announced end of March, was approved. 6.4 trillion is spent on Afghanistan wars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And rest is our few, few statistics. Just, just to let you know, the last point is important that not Russia, but US has military personnel in 130 nations and 900 overseas bases. And this comes from the from the trenches. It's a worldwide report. Now here is a visual uh, representation of U.S. bases close to Russia, around Russia, a bit further from Russia. Just just look at the number of flags and look at look at the look at where America is and where Russia is and where these bases are and how do they surround China? How do they surround uh, uh, Iran? And how do they surround Russia? Uh, then you look at NATO. This is just the U.S. basis, right? And these are, in addition to that, these are the NATO bases. Same story. Now, if you look at this, this picture, now you tell me who is threatening whom. Now, what has NATO become? I was reading an article. It was uh, straight out of it. Uh, it was a very nice analysis. Then what has NATO become? I mean, NATO, which started actually, which was created to thwart Soviet expansion, and it was supposed to be a defensive, uh, I mean, a, a kind of uh, organization which is going for, for self-defense purposes against the Soviet expansion. But it has turned now into the most aggressive and dangerous military alliance on the planet. There is not any single international military alliance of so many countries which is that aggressive and that dangerous on this planet today. If there is one, please name, name it to me and it will enhance my knowledge. 
uh, arms industry depends it for billions of profits, which is one of the largest profitable industry, which is now running three shifts, 24 hours a day, and it still cannot supply enough weapons which are needed by by Europe, by NATO members, and so on and so forth. As I said, it was created for that purpose. It, and it, it's becoming more dangerous. It's, it plans to add Finland and Sweden, as we all know, you have all read the reports. Sweden, Dr. Stjak spoke about it uh, in an interview and in a talk. And, and then they are talking to Asia Pacific four, and those four are uh, so, uh, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. Now, can you imagine, you just saw these two maps. Now, if, they, if you will have NATO uh, joined by Asia Pacific Four, who is this against? Are you going to surround China even more? And how is China going to react about, uh, towards that? Is, isn't that provocation? Why is it in your self-defense to go that far? I mean, how does it protect your defenses? Is, is any of those countries uh, from, from Asia going to attack America or Europe? I mean, and then the deal with Erdogan, obviously not only deal with uh, uh, about refugees, uh, which uh, Europe paid him $4 billion to euros to keep the refugees there and do whatever he wants to do with them. Don't let them come towards, uh, towards Europe because they are not one of us. Uh, they are not welcome. Uh, but also a deal with him because to vote in support of Sweden to become the member of NATO. So they, he got away with a, literally with a murder. Uh, now this NATO alliance, which, which is so popular these days has bombed Bosnia, Serbia, Kosovo. None of them attacked any uh, NATO country. They did not attack US. Okay, there were, there were terrible things happening there. That's a separate discussion. I'm not saying that uh, it was an unjustified war. And NATO has been launching wars or has launched wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, and again, more over a million deaths and about 38 million people driven from their homes. Uh, they are shining. So they are not only going towards Asia, they are also going towards uh, uh, South America, Latin America. They have a military train training. I mean, you, uh, UK has just sent Air Force uh, teams to Sweden and to Finland for, for training purpose. So they are doing joint trainings already. And they are engaged in ceaseless ant antagonism against Russia and China. If you hear the NATO chief talking, I mean, China, as we all know, they have China has been declared now in there very openly. It's not any covert operation. They call it the biggest economic and security threat to Western world, to, to EU and to... Uh, so. So you know which direction this wind is blowing. So given all these facts, who should feel threatened? Who should, who should feel threatened by whom? Uh, that's, that's really the question. Uh, Winston Churchill said once, never waste a good crisis. But Milton Friedman, the, the guru of, uh, of neoliberalism, he said it even better. He said only a crisis, actual or perceived, produces real change. Now really mark these words. This is a very deep philosophy, which is now uh, prevailing across the world. Only a crisis actual or perceived, doesn't matter it's real or not, produces real change. When that crisis occurs, the actions that are taken depend on the ideas that are lying around. So the agendas are made, the plans are in the drawer. It is not that an accident happens somewhere as it is presented to us. And then suddenly, quickly, people start make plans. No, these 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 crises are planned. The how to implement a change after that crisis is planned, and those plans are lying around. That I believe is our basic function of neoliberalists: to develop alternatives to existing policies, to keep them alive and available until the politically impossible becomes the politically inevitable. So we see a lot of that, that happening. Let me put it all together just quickly. We do condemn the Ukrainian war. We do sympathize absolutely, and I mean it, with all the atrocities which are happening. But these atrocities, gentlemen, ladies, is not, are not unique to this war. 
this we should not kind of brush aside like our or Western and NATO histories are so clean that they are really, uh, they just go out to help people and they, they, they have never killed anyone. Uh, the, this war has to be seen in a broader context and a historical per perspective. When this, this started really, it started, if we don't go back too far in the history, but let's start with the fall of Soviet Union, then it started. Those accusing Russia, and we do accuse Russia, but those accusing Russia have committed the same uh, war crimes many fold in many countries. And no serious efforts or interest in negotiations and ending of war. Do you hear Biden ever talking about ending the war or showing any interest in negotiating? It's just totally macho kind of uh, uh, talk and going for regime change for total humiliation and uh, uh, finishing them forever. And, and Boris Johnson few days ago, when he went to, uh, before he had to resign, went to Ukraine, he, he's, he's standing there in front of destroyed buildings and telling Ukrainians, this is your finest hour. I mean, come on. And this is the golden period for weapons, oil and gas industry. Now, Sam Biden in 2020, before he was running uh, election, he said, no drilling, period, period, period. So he didn't want to have any new drilling for oil. But now, just two years later, he says, we will do everything to ensure supply of extra 15 billion cubic meter liquid gas, he said uh, just, just um, two months ago. And they call it freedom fuel. They're the pipelines which were stopped and banned, which was going through the, the some protected areas, which was destroying the, the, the uh, livelihood of a lot of Native Americans, they are, they are back again. And they are going to have Europe now completely in grip uh, like never before. So, and this war has exposed the cases of racism and the discrimination of refugees. Don't need to repeat, you all have heard about the uh, stories about uh, uh, African and Indian students uh, fleeing uh, Ukraine and how they were treated inside Ukraine at the border, at the Polish border and so on and so forth. The countries who are being neutral or passively taking Russian side, they are being influenced and arm twisted to break ties with Russia. I mean, recently, uh, Anthony Blinken said to, about India, he said, we encourage India to voluntarily disengage from Russia instead of slapping sanctions on New Delhi for buying oil and weapons from Moscow. So, so much is the, I mean, if you are accepting or respecting the, the uh, independence of, uh, independent choices of Ukraine, why don't you respect the same for India? No, if you are the same philosophy, you are with us or against us. Uh, NATO is back from the brain dead. I mean, if you remember, uh, uh, Trump said uh, uh, NATO is dead. Uh, the, the French president, Macron, uh, just a few months before the war started, he said it is brain dead. And now they, they have put the, not only it's back, but it's going to invest trillions of dollars now uh, into the new weaponry and upgrading their Sweden and Finland and be are becoming part of NATO or at least on the way to become part of NATO. They are talking about expanding NATO towards East as I talked about and chining, ch containing China has become uh, a kind of their, uh, not a kind of, it is their official policy. Now, before we ask questions and we have discussions, I have put myself some questions to ourselves uh, before we go into discussions in the last couple of slides. I mean, first and foremost question is, are the Russian security concerns legitimate? I mean, is, is Putin has been talking nonsense. Should he be accepting all this, the, the, the buildup of uh, NATO along complete border of uh, uh, Russia? Uh, and and. If you are living in a, in a multipolar world, or if you really respect the sovereignty of other nations, you have to show some respect of their security concerns as well. So you negotiate, you discuss, and then you say what is mutually acceptable. You don't say, it totally ignore uh, security concerns of, uh, of countries you don't like, or uh, you just think, uh, well, that's, that's, that's the way we, we think it should be. 
Now, other question important to ask is, uh, which has been debated a lot recently, has the West gone back on their promise not to expand NATO towards the East? Was it not now to do that? It, it's a very, very large break of promise. And then in whose interest is it to prolong the war? Of course, Russia wants uh, whatever they want to, to occupy more territory. They want to destroy Ukraine. They want to have their security. They have good reasons, bad reasons, right reasons, wrong reasons. But to continue this war the way it is going, in whose interest at the end it is going to be? Uh, more in, uh, and I'm not talking about just country, I'm talking about lobbies and industries as well. And how does the West define victory? Because whenever anyone goes into a war, you always have an exit strategy and you always have a definition of victory. What would you call victory? Uh, who is benefiting most from the war? And can West be accused of double standards, talking about human rights, war crimes uh, in this case, and themselves uh, uh, doing the same things wherever in the world, everywhere in the world. And given the military spending, military basis of US, uh, you saw, who, is, who should be afraid of whom? Who is capable of destroying whom in the long run? Now, Putin should be condemned for the atrocities, but hasn't the US committed more atrocities and interfere in, inter, in, in, in internal affairs of dozens of countries, including targeted killings of the heads of the states, by the way? What solution does the West want? Okay, Putin is wrong, he should get out of there, but what is the ultimate solution West or NATO or Europe wants? Is it only to dominate the world without having any challenger whatsoever? Or is it, is it really they want to make this world a better place and get rid of all the evils they think are evils? Is this a message to China? the biggest threat to West economic and uh, national security. Now, who is trying to impose an imperialist and neoliberalist agenda on the world? Uh, now, I think quite often leftists or we leftists are blamed to have uh, uh, unfair sympathy with Russia because of the Soviet Union past. We don't have because Russia is not a communist country, it's not a socialist country. Russia is Russia. Uh, it's, it's not. So we are not, we don't have any of these kinds of uh, uh, underlying or nostalgic sympathies with Putin or with Russia. But we are talking about today's world in today's context and uh, uh, what, what, what's going on. So who is imposing, I mean, even if Russia wanted, how much world can they conquer with, with their size, with their GDP uh, and, and uh, with their powers? Uh, now the mercenaries, soldiers of fortune, foreign fighters, several other armed groups are regarded as unlawful combatants in conflicts. And we have seen that. That's how they created Guantanamo Bay. They said they were unlawful combatants. Therefore, they cannot be treated like regular army. The Geneva Convention doesn't apply to them. They will be treated as worst of the worst, as they said at that time. But why not Ukraine? We see soldiers from all over the place uh, going there and fighting retired army legions, uh, foreign fighting legions, and so on and so forth. Is it conceivable that anyone can even imagine sanctions against the US and EU, despite all the atrocities US had did? I mean, not a single person has been uh, uh, put in prison because of the, the people who reported on those atrocities have, put, have been put into prison. They are running for their life. Now, last but not least, isn't Ukraine to weapons industry what COVID is to pharma? Uh, now, let's have the discussion now. Uh, with this quote, if war, if war is, is a big and profitable in industry, how can there be peace? So now you can draw your own conclusions, really, whether this was, and this is how this war is presented to us uh, in the press. And thank you. And I will now stop sharing screen and we will go to uh, have question and answer. Yeah, session. thank you very much, uh, uh, Mohit Bhatti, for your... Uh... Uh, a nice presentation and detailed presentation. And I've seen a lot of chat uh, uh, during this presentation. Um, and of course, uh, we are not here to defend or um, uh, promote uh, Russian aggression. We, uh, we all condemn Russian aggression here. Uh, but uh, this, this dialogue is all about to show another picture that is actually the dichotomy of the West. 
So uh, I want everybody to uh, please uh, uh, start discussion by raising hands. And I would um, uh, ask you to please, even you want to comment, but short, and also to ask questions related to this discussion, but uh, in this scope, not away from that scope. Yeah, please. Who is first to ask, uh, Moin, uh, bhai, uh, you have just raised the hand. Can you please unmute yourself and uh, ask the question? And uh, Rana Sam, to add to you, uh, may you please please feel free to ask questions in Urdu, English, Punjabi, German, <laughs> Dutch, and somebody will always uh, translate uh, if, if needed. Yeah. Sorry, um, I, I was not prepared to ask a question. It was just a mistake. The next okay, one. fine, fine. Uh, but uh, I, I would uh, like to invite uh, Farooq Tariq Sahib. Uh, Farooq Tariq Sahib, would you like to ask or add something? Okay, thank you. Uh, but it's a uh, very good presentation in detail, in perspectives. I have disagreed some of your assertions and priorities. That's where I have put some uh, uh, some comments in the chat box and it's good to start the discussion. And thank you, Ishtiaq sir, you have responded uh, there. Uh, the main issue is really that we have to condemn NATO. The, that is an absolute truth. And we are for the dissolution of NATO. NATO should, should not have any place in the society, and it was already agreed as uh, Ishtar Sahib has written earlier. But on the other side, are we going to defend, are trying to defend, or gives any justification for Russian aggression on Ukraine? The issue is that Ukraine is under attack. It's not Russia who is under attack. It's not America who is under attack. It's Ukrainian people who are under attack. And we have seen destruction of cities after cities. And we have seen some of the worst scenes in the recent history of a war like this. So our first and foremost task is to condemn the Russian aggression on Ukraine. That's where we should start. And then we should go into perspectives, the reasons which you gave quite nicely uh, to some extent. And I think that uh, uh, there is no doubt that Americans and NATO and uh, NATO is trying to use this for their expansion as we have seen in the recent past. But people are dying in Ukraine. That's the main issue. Focus of our, our total attention has to be Ukraine. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Isiak, please. Yeah, please unmute yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think the second or third law of physics is that for every action, there is an uh, opposite, opposite and equal reaction. So if now you agree with us that NATO was provoking all this, and you agree with us, Farooq Tahir Saab, that it was promised or the mission of NATO was to contain the spread of Soviet communism, Soviet commun uh, communism disintegrated, and the earlier promises as Vahid Bhatti Saab so eloquently presented in the historical sketch were that NATO's mission is over. But what we know then now is that NATO kept on expanding, kept on expanding. They tried in Georgia. They were again encircling the Soviet Union. And Farooq Tahir Saab, you know that in the Second World War, 27 million Soviet citizens were killed. So how can you forget the psychology of the Russians? They would never allow that to happen again. Putin gave many proposals till the very end, saying that we are willing to give assurances that there would be no invasion of, of uh, 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 Ukraine if they are 
not going to pursue this NATO uh, and, and uh, joining the NATO uh, uh, mission. But Zelensky and his lackeys, they kept on provoking. And then what Putin did is what always happens in a war, I think. This is what Vahid uh, Bhatti was trying to do when he gave the perspective of what has happened in the Second World War. There is always an opposite and equal reaction or else Russia would be destroyed once again. They are never going to allow it to happen. War is terrible. Every day what happens and we see on the screen is heart-wrenching, no doubt, but simply being sympathetic is being sentimental. We are here to analyze and analysis requires detached uh, uh, you know, treatment of an issue. And therefore, what Putin has done is highly regretful, but we have to understand why this happened. I think I'll end here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Wait up, please. Uh, let, yeah. me, let me respond. I think uh, I, I think I said uh, quite a few times with uh, pretty clearly that, that we are not supporting this war. I think we said uh, up front that uh, wars are wrong and they are not the means. But here comes a question. Uh, what if, what if this would have gone for another two or three or five years? Uh, what would have NATO, America and European Union done to Russia? Where, where all this was going? I mean, if a country takes such a dramatic action uh, uh, step as, uh, as Russia has done, again, I'm not justifying. And I think other comment that uh, like we are, uh, almost justifying the, the Russian atrocities in you know, When I say West and NATO and Ukraine, I mean the governments, the establishments, the ruling classes, uh, the people who own the, the, the means of production. I don't mean the people. The, 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 the suffering of, uh, oh man, this, sorry, a call coming into me. The, the, the suffering of the people is absolutely terrible. And I talked about also not comparing the wars, but the West is comparing the wars. If you look at, just, just imagine again, Mexico signs a defense pact with China. And China starts making some military bases across the American borders in, I mean, we saw the Cuban crisis. Exactly. Bay of Pigs. Where did it lead to? Which country in the world, which has some self-respect and is and is powerful and big enough, will allow this to continuously happen? And and when Russia was objecting to this piece by piece, people getting into the European Union and those eastern eastwards expansion of uh, of NATO, they were laughed at. They were humiliated. They said, "We never made this promise." Show and and the U U.S. Foreign Secretary saying, "Show us the piece of paper. Where did I sign? Where did I promise in writing? You are making all this up." And that's why I have shown this video. It is not made up. They they said that, and 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 but they still went back on the on on that promise. So where would have it stopped if this war wouldn't have started? I mean, they in in another three four years. You, you saw the maps, how many bases, how many, and again, we are not justifying in any way the sufferings of the Ukrainian people, absolutely not. Those people have nothing to, nothing to do with that. But, but as I said, I mean, along Mexican borders, you will not accept uh, uh, a pact with China and Chinese forces and bases being wrecked. There will be atomic, atomic war in five minutes. Uh, America will not, uh, so this, this is, See, this, this, as I said, there's a lot of agenda behind it. It's not only Russia, it's, it's China. It's getting NATO back on the feet. It's uh, getting the European Union or the NATO members to start building up their defense forces, uh, buying more ammunition, spending minimum 2%, like they were 0 0.075, uh, they were spending uh, and breaking their own agreements. And they had to, and they had to, and, and you see how, uh, Euro was coming up as an alternative currency to dollar as well. I mean, lots of countries talking about trading in Euro and, uh, and getting rid of dollars. Uh, so that, that all had to be brought back into perspective, Europe into control, Europe more in, uh, in, in, independent on, 
on, on the US. So it's part of the very large agenda which is happening. And, and uh, I have to, I'm sorry, I have to agree with uh, Dr. Ishtiak. Uh, to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Uh, and and that's, that's what it, it has happened. It is bad, it's sad. Uh, I think Putin has miscalculated quite a few things. That's my personal uh, thinking and analysis that he never expected West and NATO to react this powerful way. But again, the, the, the propaganda, I give you just one example, one example on one given day. I mean, for, for, for the first couple of months, there was nothing else in the mainstream press in the, in the Western media, nothing else except Ukrainian war and very small minor stories about the ref refugees and people coming in. There was a very heart breaking and, and really uh, tear prompting story about a woman in Ukraine who was fleeing and she lost her seven, eight year old son. And she found him after three or four hours. And the, the, the tears, the hugging scenes and everything, it was all over television. And, and it's terrible for a mother of seven year old thinking that uh, her son has been killed. The same day, maybe around same time in Yemen, uh, American bomb dropped by Saudi Arabia killed various children and a mother was looking for the pieces of her child, pieces. And no media reported it. So this is how these emotions are created. And this is how, this is advertising. I mean, this is how they have presented this war to turn this whole emotions of uh, in, in human beings in a way that, that everything should be sympathized. I mean, look at the statements of the foreign ministers of the press, of, 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 of uh, very kind of respectable uh, television channels. They are one of us. Oh my God, they are people uh, with blue eyes and white skins and blonde hair. They are not some, some goddamn Middle Eastern people. They are not some Arabs uh, from somewhere. They are, they are one of us. We owe them this. They should, be, they should be part of us. These are the statements. Even the head of European Union was making these kinds of statements. I mean, I'm talking about that. Yeah, it let's uh, yeah, Wahid Bhatti sahab, let's take uh, other comments and uh, sure. so that you could also um, uh, share the the picture you want to show. So um, uh, first, I would uh, like to ask Zafar because he raised his hand first, and then uh, to Ella and then David uh, Taylor, David Taylor. So, Zafar, please. टाइम देने का मैं उर्दू में सवाल करूंगा यस यस प्लीज जैसा फारूक तारिक साहब ने कहा कि वहां यूक्रेन में डिस्ट्रक्शन है और हालात खराब है मेरा क्वेश्चन यहां पे ये है कि हम हमारे पास जो इंफॉर्मेशन आ रही है ये तो सारे वेस्टर्न मीडिया के है मतलब बीबीसी ये सीएनएन और ब्ला ब्ला अभी इसमें हम वो जो मेरा क्वेश्चन जो है पहला ये है कि मतलब हमारे पास तो सही इंफॉर्मेशन आ नहीं रहे क्योंकि हम नहीं देख रहे कि मतलब रशियन जो जो उनके फौजी है वो तो कीप में है ही नहीं वो तो डोंबास रिपब्लिक्स में है ना ठीक है पहले ये बात और दूसरी ये कि अगर इस पे बटी साहब कोई कमेंट करे कि हम आ, मतलब जो जो सही सही खबरें है उस तक रसाई कैसे मुमकिन है मतलब अगर हम एक एक, एक तरफ से देखें यहां पे वेस्टर्न मतलब यहां तो इन लोगों ने आरटी को भी बंद कर दिया रशियन टुडे को और सारे मीडिया जो है यहां की मीडिया है तो हम कैसे मतलब वो सच्चाई तक हम कैसे पहुंच सकते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू जफर वहीद बटी साहब ही हैज जस्ट आस्क अबाउट द यू नो द द about uh, the media because no, very, uh, very, very quick, one, yeah. very, uh, very quick and very short response to him because uh, Zafar is right because uh, the, the as I said the, the war is fought really being fought in the media uh, as much as it is being fought uh, by the by the armed forces uh, the thing is uh, and in, in Ukraine has banned also publication of uh, all Russian literature and books which have been produced during last, I don't know, 50 years or 10 years or whatever. No, but Zafarza, there are alternative uh, uh, channels and resources. I mean, you have uh, 
Uh, you have a website called Democracy at Work, if you want to make a note. I can talk to you later as well. There is a website, Democracy Now. There is The Intercept. The Guardian even sometimes uh, reports quite. So there are Jado Jad in Pakistan. Uh, Tariq, uh, uh, Farooq Tariq uh, actually is uh, one of us, one of them. Uh, so there are many uh, resources, many sources uh, where you can get the information. Yeah, thank you. And Ella, your question, please. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for giving me time. Uh, well, I don't really have a question. I have a comment because uh, we are, you guys are talking about uh, big politics and all these wars and everything. And I just uh, wanted to maybe throw some light on just regular people. Okay. For example, uh, well, I can talk from Pol Polish perspective, obviously, because I come from Poland and I have a lot of friends here and family. So... <clears throat> I think that uh, people don't really go for this big politics, first of all. They go for security, they go for freedom, and they go for prosperity. And I believe once any system which can provide this, people will vote for. And I'm afraid Russia could not really, or yeah, especially Russia now, the Soviet Union to some extent, they could not provide these things. They... They are perceived very, of course, there's big propaganda also in Poland right now, but uh, certain things are also true because like, you know, during I, I come, let's say I was born in 72, so I was uh, late communist. I was living in Poland when it was late communism here. And it's not uh, comparable with what was happening before because we still enjoyed uh, quite a bit of freedom. Uh, and the Gerek and also under, uh, of course, uh, Western European loans and all this. But the thing is that that's what people want, I tell you, from, let's say, really down Again, security, prosperity, and freedom. And if Russia cannot provide these things, okay, people will rebel. Very simple. And if it will be, if Americans can provide this to some extent, people will go for it. And I think that's what's happening this week. You know, whatever Putin's big politics is, whatever. In fact, they are against because they know that under Russians, we did not have much freedom. We did not have, uh, 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 we did not have, uh, let's say, prosperity and, uh, well, to some extent, security, yes. But, yeah, I think people were tired, sick and tired of Russians. And also, they are sort of crude and crude, uh, you know. Uh, Dominance, simply dominance. Okay, I think Americans are doing this a bit more sophisticated way, but still, it is more acceptable than what uh, apparently when, uh, what Russians were doing. And this is simple. People prefer to be, though there are of course voices now and people start to rebel as well. But for the time being, they they are like uh, you know if you work hard, you do something. Okay? And the Russians, you work hard, you have nothing. Okay? You're not allowed to have even. So this is the big difference between the two systems. We can't hear her. We can't hear her. Uh, Ella, Ella, because of yeah. the mic and the wind outside, ah, yeah. uh, okay. your voice is broken and uh, more noise is coming out. Shall I repeat? Maybe yeah, that, that's all. No, no. Uh, most it's of the okay. part we have heard we have heard most of it yeah thank you yes yeah, so this is what i i you know like from this because okay big politics of course has influence but i t tell you people after all have some say okay maybe less in all this but when they get really angry like if i would say if ukrainians did not have perspective now of joining you of having better life they would not fight they would simply surrender okay because there's no point but because they have some perspective they have some hope let's say like poland was in 90s or 80s then they will go for it, they will fight for it, I believe. You know, so that's that's the only thing. So thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Uh, just a minute. Uh, I want to give uh, uh, mic yeah. to Taylor first. Huh? Then we would uh, come to the uh, to response. Yeah, David at Taylor. David at Taylor, I think. Yeah, I've heard a lot of NATO bashing talk here, which accomplishes nothing. It helps no one accomplishes nothing. Fact, the fact is there is a war. There's a war in Ukraine. Now, you talk about one action becomes an equal and opposite reaction. Where is your opposite reaction, your equal opposite reaction to this? Now, Pakistan 
tends to lose? How much wheat comes from Ukraine to Pakistan? Do your local bakers, are they going to run out of wheat to make their bread? This is something that you haven't even thought about, is the global implications of Russia taking over 20% of the world's food. And this affects Pakistan as well as Europe, as well as it doesn't affect the United States, but it affects the people everywhere. And this is something that has not been discussed whatsoever. Now, you can be pro-Russian. I don't care. You can be pro-Putin. I don't care. But NATO bashing does not help the situation. It does not help the Ukrainian people. Not one bit. Now, another thing is you complain about NATO spending and the arms. Where do you think the money comes from for Pakistan to have an army? It 100% comes from the American government. Don't forget it. Now, I'm not saying hoorah, hoorah, America. I'm, I'm just as much European as anybody else here. But people, you need to put things in perspective. Where does Pakistan get their military? Where do they get, get their funding? Where do they get their food? And what is going to happen when all of that goes away? And this is the situation the world is facing right now. There's hunger in Africa. Where do they get their wheat from? They get it from the Ukraine. People, back, bakers in in Kenya are worried about how are they going to make more bread. People in, in all over Africa are wondering where does the wheat come from so we can make bread. This is what the people depend on. And it's not going to happen by sitting here bashing NATO. NATO has a, a commitment to, for free trade and opening up the roots of trade. And Russia is standing against that right now. You can say all you want to about treaties and not have you, but the treaty that established the present Ukraine, signed in 1993 by the Soviet Union and later the Russian mm -hmm. Republic, said that Ukraine would be hands off, free to do what they wanted to do. And that has been violated by Russia today. Putin has stated publicly that he wants to retake all of Eastern Europe, including East Germany, which is not going to happen. But that is his goal, and he has stated that publicly. Now, where does that put Pakistan? Where does that put the rest of the world when we go back for 50 years to what it was during the Soviet time? And that is something that I haven't seen discussed or even thought about here. So I'm not saying right, wrong. I'm saying Russia is wrong right now, and we all, including myself, need to do some more homework. Thank you, uh, Taylor. Yeah, uh, Wahid Bhatti sahab, and then uh, I would come to Ishtia Kemal sir. Oh, I think that the, the couple of points you make, uh, I, I agree with them, and with some I don't. Uh, I mean, Pakistan wasn't a part of the scope today of the discussion, and uh, otherwise we would have mentioned that. Uh, and uh, of course, everyone knows that what Pakistan army does and where their, their, their support and money comes from and so on and so forth. And I think this, this, this thing, again, it's, it's so difficult uh, position we are taking that the, or sensitive that the minute we kind of condemn, criticize NATO for doing what they are doing, suddenly it's like with us or against us kind of mentality kicks in. If we are criticizing NATO, it doesn't mean we are supporting Putin. We, we are not supporting Putin. As I said also, I think, quote unquote, I mentioned it's not a communist country. It's not a socialist country. It's, uh, he's not uh, doing, he's, he's, he's actually, as Farooq Tariq rightfully wrote in the comments column, that he is, he is uh, anti-communist uh, in his own country. But the thing is, if, if NATO and civilized West and America and everyone has so much pain for hunger in the world, then there are a million other things, uh, uh, David, that they can do to stop hunger. They have been exploiting Africa. They have been exploiting Latin America. They have been exploiting Asia for God knows how many years. And there are many, many steps they could have taken even before the Ukrainian war to, to get this uh, hunger away and get people, some, get people some food on their plate, as they say. There was only one sentence which could have prevented this war and not, the, oh, uh, what did uh, Biden say? Uh, oh God, this man has no right to, to govern and, uh, and this guy. He could have said, 
Putin, let's sit down. We understand your security concerns. Let us sit down and, and talk about it. There would have been no war. No, but it is like pissing contest between these arrogant leaders. And one wants to show more power than the other. It is control of the world. It's not just, uh, I mean, as I said, you, you, you saw the numbers. There was the reason I showed these numbers. And the numbers clearly show that Russia, Putin must be mad to believe that he can ever conquer East Germany or do all these things uh, you said he, he said or he, he thinks he might be doing. But literally, who has captured the world? Who has captured the trade? What are the trade blocks which are, they can just boycott any, any country and kill it. Like you close down the water and food supply to a, to a village and the people will die and starve. That's how they can do. That's what they did in Iraq. They did in Afghanistan. They did in Syria. They did in Indonesia. They did, I mean, I can go on and on in how many countries. So they could have done a million things to help people uh, and, and get this food on the plates in, uh, in, in, in poor people of Africa. So it's not that now suddenly Russia has robbed is reason for hunger in the world. Reason in the hunger in the world is the imperialist, it's neo-colonial and neo-fascist system which is uh, depriving people of their rights. Not any, not any other reason. You think if, if Russia wouldn't have attacked Ukraine, the, the people in Africa would be eating biryani every day or, or they would be having a lot of a fantastic life and all the hunger would have been gone? No. Yeah, Dr. Isyak, please. And then I come to Rais Arim, Sababun and Tayyip. I've heard these comments and I can understand the concerns David R. Taylor and uh, Khalid Faruqi's uh, wife. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't find her name here. Ella, Ella, and, and Ella. Ella and other comrades have expressed. Let me quote somebody who none of you can ever challenge. And that is Henry Kissinger. There is an article recently written by him where he said that the thousand years history of Russian-Ukraine relationship indicates the way the Russians and Ukrainians see one another. And he said the solution is that Ukraine should not aim at joining NATO. On the other hand, it can negotiate joining the European Union. So there was an offer from the man who is the architect of the Vietnam War, where three million people, poor peasants, were bombed out of existence. But he's a realist. So let's not try to trivialize things by saying uh, uh, Putin is taking away the food of the world and so and so on, because. Putin has said, we are agreed to transport all the wheat and there are talks going on by our Turkey about it. So there is no aim to uh, uh, starve the people of the world. This is all American propaganda and I'm sorry to say David R. Taylor doesn't seem to uh, grasp the connections and I don't know from where Pakistan came into being. What was the connection of mentioning Pakistan and its armament and its military rule. Sorry, I couldn't understand that, but please do read Henry Kissinger and he's not a supporter of, of, of Putin or of communism or anything of the sort. He is the greatest theorist of realism in politics. And he says for Ukraine, the proper order is to not join NATO, but try to negotiate that they can be a member of the European Union. I think that is how peace will be established. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Reis, please. Thank you, Rana Saab. Uh, I, I'm on, yes. Okay, first of all, I will just uh, like to thank Vahid Bhatti for his uh, an excellent uh, presentation uh, today. It's very informative, very impressive, and uh, very factual. And once again, thank you, Vaid Bhakti, for uh, for the for your contribution as answers uh, of the points. I will uh, tell two short points. The first is that why uh, actually there is 
a war in uh, Ukraine, and it's a similar war as it has been in Iraq or in Afghanistan and other countries. Uh, it's destruction always. It is, it's uh, 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 the whole population uh, uh, would be destroyed when uh, there is a war. So no, uh, no doubt that uh, it's a war in Ukraine and there is uh, more and more uh, losses of human beings and uh, and the world is it's, uh, on the other hand uh, becoming uh, no wheat and that's why uh, they, uh, they are uh, uh, suffering because of hunger that is of uh, a reality okay but I think the comparison as I live in Germany and I see in mainstream the whole day long there are uh, pictures uh, for uh, a country, there is a war going on, uh, and uh, with every detail. And then I have uh, uh, pictures in my head, uh, 2003, when there was a war in Iraq, 650,000 people have been died there. And uh, nobody have seen detailed pictures because uh, it was manipulated. Uh, and. Uh, that's the one point. That's it. That why I see the pictures from the Ukraine, but uh, I'm not alone. There are much more thousand uh, media uh, medias. They are sending these pictures uh, in very uh, uh, effective way. The second point, uh, what I wanted to say, that if we have uh, followed. Uh, the statements of uh, certain high level uh, diplomats or politicians, uh, political uh, politicians from America or from Western countries, uh, about all in USA, they are talking, it's not uh, in a lies uh, uh, in slow, but also in loud uh, that they want to. Uh, uh, destroy Russia. Uh, I mean, uh, they, uh, uh, not in this sense, destroy forever. Uh, they want to break uh, the unity of Russia. Uh, and they have, uh, uh, they say, there is no secret. They say they're open. Uh, and uh, and the, at the same time, uh, since uh, Mr. Biden is uh, ruling in Washington, uh, he's talking uh, all day long uh, against Russia, against China, uh, and that it's 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 a, it's a uh, Dr. Stefan has uh, uh, said, and it is correct. Uh, Soviet Union is dissolved, dissolved, uh, uh, dissolved, uh, uh, and Warsaw Pact was uh, dissolved, but the NATO is, is still uh, um, working with their antagonistic policies against Russia. Okay, and Russia is a, not a, 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 a socialist country. It's a, an, uh, it's a country uh, as uh, any other uh, uh, capitalist country. There is no, no big difference. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Sabavun, uh, you and then uh, Tayyip, uh, please uh, comment or ask question and then we go forward. Yeah, please, Sababun, unmute yourself. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, thanks to Wahid, sir. It was a nice, detailed presentation. Uh, I want to add something. Um, everyone knows it's a war, a war of propaganda. Every country lies to benefit of their own. So it's crucial for us to hear from everyone. And what I have noticed in the West, in the West is that every country, almost every country wants to escalate this war. There is almost no attempt to end this war. So my question is, uh, uh, what is the best solution to this war? Is the, uh, is the abolition of uh, NATO uh, the best solution for this? And um, the other thing what I want to talk about is the sanctions on Russia, because uh, in the news, uh, and uh, I uh, notice it here in the West countries that uh, these sanctions are not putting any, um, how do you say it, any solution to the uh, to this war. And uh, 
uh, I heard some people are talking about uh, people. These sanctions uh, are uh, pouring the people of West countries, and uh, these sanctions are not doing anything to end uh, the war in, uh, in, in Ukraine. And last, I want to thank the OPP to, uh, for organizing this, uh, this event. It gives us a good platform to discuss these types of topics. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sabamun. Uh, we come to your point. Uh, we um, ask uh, your question uh, from our speakers and other participants as well. But first, I want to take uh, a question from Tayyip. Tayyip, please. Yeah, unmute yourself, please, Tayyip. Yeah, I'm here. Please go ahead. Yeah, Tayyip, please. Did you call me or someone else? No, 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 no. I, I call Tayyip, not Taylor. You. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but... oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you very much uh, to all the participants and uh, especially to Wade. Uh, I always say I couldn't have done it in three three lives. So, so much appreciated. Um, my just comment is that all the governments, especially Western governments, they are puppets, okay? And behind the scene is the weapon industry, pharma industry, and all these industries, they, 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 they want to keep, keep, keep running and uh, in, inventing new weapons, testing, they don't bother how many lives are gone. They don't bother anything. They are actually behind the scene. That's, that's my, my opinion. Might be wrong. You know. that's... No, sure. Uh, so um, uh, thank you, Tayyab. Uh, I want to uh, invite uh, Wahid Bhattisab to please respond to the questions that, or uh, the comments that have just raised. No, I, I think the good comments and good contributions, I can, I can only say that, uh, again, not, not being ap uh, apologetic at all, but what I'm saying is that we are not supporting the invasion. We are putting this invasion is a, in a historical perspective. We are giving very hard facts, uh, historical evidences, uh, what these powers have been doing and what is playing. And it is up to people to, to come to their, their own conclusion. And the thing is, you I mean, they had a, they signed this pact with Iran and America one-sidedly threw it out of the window. Okay. As every day, this is, I mean, invasion of somebody's territory. We are in principle, I, I agree with everyone who said that, that no sovereign country has the right to attack another sovereign country and occupy their territory illegally. That's illegal. But this occupation is okay if it is endorsed by the West, if it is done by the West. But if it is not in their interest, then it becomes an occupation and there is all out of all out war against it and huge propaganda against it. Uh, uh, Palestinian territories, Gaza, uh, Jordan Valley, you, you, you name Golan Heights, they are all, world accepts that it is illegally occupied territory. Excuse but, me, uh, can, I, can I just uh, say a word here, react? But <clears throat> it's not true completely because there was big resistance in US against Vietnam War, no, right? So it's not always that but, uh, no, it's no, no, not- no, no. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the government, again, people, see, there was a million man march in London one million men marched in London against the attack on in Iraq, but they went and did it based on lies, they did it. And has anyone been prosecuted for, for these lies? This guy waving test tube, this guy talking about yellow cake, this guy talking about this and all these uh, weapons of mass restriction. How many people have been convicted and, and are sitting in prison now? No, the people who reported on it, they are sitting in prisons. But people who did it, they are all having a great time. You are right. People did pro protest and demonstrate. We do. People do. You are right. <clears throat> yes, please. Uh, uh, 
Carry on. Next one. Anyone else with question? So I just want to um, uh, repeat the question about a question of Sabawun, one of the participants. Yeah. Uh, he 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 asked about the solution. What solution would be there to end this? war and end this uh, dichotomy. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we had the solution, <laughs> I don't think all of us would be living in Florida. <laughs> now, yes, I Dr. Think, Ishtiak. Uh, there's these solutions. Yeah, yeah okay, doc, let, let Dr. Ishtiak go first and I, I, I'll, I'll talk about that as well, yes. No, I just watched <clears throat> a discussion on the Indian channels and one of the very smart Indian uh, uh, compares who was conducting it, he said, the war can stop in an hour if the West and Ukraine can give this assurances that they are not seeking membership of NATO. Simple as that. Everybody knows that if Ukraine were not to insist on getting into NATO, the war would not be possible for... Putin justified the war on that basis. He kept on giving uh, uh, this ultimatum that if uh, Zelensky does not move away from it, then we have no choice but to go there and, and take preemptive action. This is preemptive action. Farooq Tariq sahab, there is something called preemptive action that you act before others can act against you. So this is what he declared and he offered. The foreign minister of Russia also made this very explicit in several situations, discussions, but nobody was listening. The war, nobody def defends. It's horrible. It's... There were people listening. There were people listening and there were also people knowing... No, they were not listening. They were not what listening. What Russia says is propaganda and lies. They said they wouldn't raise. I think you Ukraine. are just sold out to the American point of view. The greatest propaganda no, machinery is, is run by the West. No, not oh, necessarily. No, no. Russia has a major, major. They don't have any capacity to conduct yeah, the same. Yeah, just uh, we, we don't. We we don't want to uh, cross talk here. So one by one, we raise hand and then we talk. No, yeah, I, uh, let me add to let me add to because you asked uh, to what the Dr. Ishtiak said. I think, <clears throat> firstly, there has to be a willingness to stop war, right? So far, I think a couple of people have commented as well that there is no signal going out except right in the beginning when when uh, Macron and uh, Schulz. Uh, Germans, they tried, but they were called to Washington and slapped and sent back. And then next day, he announced a trillion dollar expansion of uh, German army. Uh, see, if if Ukraine has the right to choose whichever bloc they want to choose, but so are the other countries. I mean, why you have to choose your bloc? It's OK. But if someone does not want to choose your bloc, it's not OK. So you have to give this, 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 this arrogance up that the world has to be ordered and around you. And, and the countries, no country, see if your policy basically is no country should ever become that powerful that it equals us, that it becomes a threat, so-called threat to us and threat means economic threat or, or any other kind of threat. That so, you, you have to get rid of this double standard. And as I, I totally agree that the, the simplest one step is, I know this is every country's right, but this is a world peace at stake, 20% food supply at stake. Why doesn't, and Putin is the devil, but we are most civilized people. We have a lot of pain for hunger and peace and this and that. Why don't we take then one step and say, Listen, it's a big country. It also has security concerns, like we have security concerns, like we have economic concerns. He also has some security and economic concerns. Why don't we sit together and say, okay, if this is really about, I mean, Ukrainian people are being killed. They are being used as fodder by America and by NATO. Who's dying there? Who's losing homes? 
they are making money in selling weapons which are killing them then they will send uh, people who will plan rebuilding reconstruction and they will make more money than than those who did by destroying it so they will get richer in 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 every sense so they have to show some respect to diplomacy live and let live to to mutual coexistence like say and okay we discuss this on long term they can become member of european union and and not about nato because nato what is the reason for being for nato i mean stop russia is now but last 20 years what has the reason for being for russia i mean so much uh, uh, taylor mr taylor is supporting uh, nato that it's a blessing uh, that that they are here but what is the reason for being and if they can do this kind of blocks other can do as well why not so i think what you the, the the basic issue here is that they want a single singular polar world that it is everything is dictated by us all businesses are run by us russia would have been after soviet union uh, fell apart i mean look at what happened during those days to inflation to properties to the chicago boys who raided chile and then raided russia and and all of eastern europe i, I mean if if this wouldn't have happened what would russia what was what did west want what did us want at that time to own all multinationals in in russia to all own businesses in russia to make russia part of their list of uh, countries they exploit and they totally control then russians are russians are the best people in the whole world if they if they if they are all lined up according to our interests but if they are not and again war is not a solution but where is it going i mean I, those who say he, he shouldn't have attacked and i also agree with he shouldn't have attacked where was it going what was west and nato doing to russia what were the plans may i comment on on your comments sir yes yeah, yeah, sir uh, 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 taylor j- j- hold on your comment i i want to take questions from uh, because uh, two persons have raise their hands uh, yeah uh, iphone i have uh, I, i cannot see your name here yeah yeah you please unmute yourself and then re- oh he has just left okay uh, sabdar zaidi please ask your question first of all thank you to all participants uh, i want to add two things uh, this uh, war stage at ukraine is not only a battlefield but is kind of marketplace uh, nato or allied they are trying to sell their high tech weapons to the world they are showing their performance for example a game changing weapon uh, anti tank uh, missile so tanks are tanks industry is in turmoil so tanks tanks are helpless they are not usable so they are marketing their anti tank missile to the whole world actually the billion, trillion dollar business and secondly uh, for example in netherlands we had a, a huge uh, lobby lobby against nuclear uh, reactors nuclear power generation but recently dutch government has decided to to start two new power generation uh, nuclear power generation uh, they will produce uh, a lot of energy because they are using uh, uh, the reason of russian blackmailing of gas supply so the world is going against to era of uh, nuclear uh, uh, production nuclear energy production so these are some consequences of this war which are really uh, against humanity so this was by uh, addition thank you and maria maria lucas please ask uh, please unmute yourself yes uh, thank you first of all uh, thank you for organizing this uh, this platform i'm very happy to be amongst you and discuss this uh, and especially as tribute to khalid um i think this is very good that you um 
postponed the meeting and organized it in this way. Thank you for that. Um, I, I want to, well, it's, it's a comment or to add something to the, the discussion. I was working until March in uh, Kiev, in uh, Ukraine, and uh, waiting for Khalid to join me. He's, he said he would join me there. And I, uh, I was protesting at, at the same at the same way as uh, as Ella protested uh, for his coming because of security, etc. But um, at the same time, I I knew it was important that a, a reporter like him would be there because the confusion, the 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 situation on the ground was very confusing. I was working there um, in the the OSCE, the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe. And that means that I also was working with Russians, with Belarusians, with uh, the people from Kyrgyzstan, etc. And uh, but unfortunately, we had to be, you know, had to close down the mission and be evacuated in uh, in um, in March. What happens now is that this organization, which was in fact a civilian multinational, um, yeah, multinational organization. Is now um, uh, is now closed, and what what is now uh, is that Europeans are now back in uh, Ukraine, uh, but this is a European this is a European mission, which has a military component, and this is what I want to uh, add to your discussion because now it seems as if there is uh, Europe and there is NATO and there is Russia, but it is more. Uh, it's a more sophisticated mixed situation there. So Europeans are there in a mission on the ground, but there is a military component there. So it 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 is not uh, um, a, a Europe and NATO is not as 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 uh, 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 separated as it seems in your discussion. And this is my worry uh, that what is in fact happening there what does it mean that there's a military component to the european mission on on the ground um so this is an open question i'm just still thinking about what is the situation there in in uh, you, you know how to how to continue and so it is i agree with mr istia that we must say nato is you know um uh, Ukraine, it would be already very good that if we could say NATO must not expand further, but I fear this is already a past station, you know, it's already too late to stay this, that's, that's so that we have to see what and what other strategies to, to follow, to develop in, in this uh, geopolitical uh, context. Uh, and one other point I want to add is that um, it is. It must also be really acknowledged that Russia is not alone in the whole world. We look uh, mostly to the West, but see as see as what is happening with a lot of, for example, African nations. Why they support Russia? They they in a way, they don't deny <laughs> denounce uh, Russia. But the, so um, I I think if we look. Uh, geopolitically and we and internationally, we must not only look at the West. We must take along also other nation states, especially in Africa, which also have uh, are at stake. Um, well, and then then just to to, to finalize my comment, I also feel uh, you know uh, uh, there is no protest like we had in the in the Vietnam protests and in the uh, and, and you know Iraq protests but I also don't I would like to organize the protest but with with what slogan that's you know what that is the point where to go what what is the what is the future but uh, thanks for giving all the thoughts and all the discussions uh, today thank you yeah uh, uh, iPhone yeah please Unmute yourself. Unmute girl. And hello, hello. Are you here, Yeah, G G G G. Yes. Math. Uh, Urdu Punjabi mix. Today, to call. Karunga. G G. So, see Punjabi. Then, Punjabi. Chi call. Karlo. We can translate. Ah, ji, ah, ji. The first call. Taaye. Abe. Jo. Ukraine. Be the. Be the. ਹੋਰਿਆ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਬੜੀ ਸੋਹਣੀ ਚਲੋ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਵਹੀਦ ਹੋਣਾ ਨੇ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਠੀਕ ਆ ਵਧੀਆ ਤੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ 
ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਫਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਦੇ ਕੁਝ ਲੋਕ ਜਨਾਨੀਆਂ ਬੱਚੇ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਸਫਰ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਔਰ ਜੋ ਜੋ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਇੱਧਰ ਗੁਆਂਢ ਚੋਂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਚੋਂ ਵੀ ਦੇਖ ਰਿਹਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਾੜੀਆਂ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਸਿੰਪਥੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਆ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਅਟੈਕ ਕੀਤਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿਉਂ ਗਿਆ ਉਹ ਆ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਆ ਕਿ ਹੁਣ ਜਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਉਕਸਾਈ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੇਰੇ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਦਬਾਉਣਾ ਹੀ ਆ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਬੰਦਾ ਕਰੂਗਾ ਕੀ ਪੋਪ ਪੋਪ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਦੋ ਵਾਰ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਨਾਟੋ ਦੇ ਵਿਸਥਾਰ ਕਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਲੜਾਈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਈ ਆ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਬੰਦ ਕਰਾਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਉਹਦੀ ਵੀ ਗੱਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੰਨੀ ਹਾਲਾਂਕਿ ਇਹਦਾ ਪੋਪ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਰਿਗਾਰਡ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਹਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੰਨੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਵਿਚਾਰੇ ਨੂੰ ਚੁੱਪ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈ ਗਿਆ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਰਾਤਾ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨੇ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਚੁੱਪ ਕਰ ਗਿਆ ਭਈ ਹੁਣ ਮੇਰੀ ਕੀ ਤਾਂ ਸੁਣਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹ ਸੋ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਆ ਭਈ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਤੇ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਦੇਖੀਏ ਮੇਰੇ ਘਰ ਦੇ ਮੋਰੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਗੁਆਂਢੀ ਮੇਰਾ ਕਹੇ ਪੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੇਰੇ ਘਰ ਦੇ ਮੋਰੇ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਗੁੰਡੇ ਖੜੇ ਕਰਨੇ ਆ 30 35 ਤੇ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਖੜੇ ਹੋਊਗੇ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਸੋਚੂਗਾ ਇੱਕ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਦੋ ਚਾਰ ਵਾਰ ਗੁਆਂਢੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਕਹੂੰਗਾ ਭਈ ਤੂੰ ਜਾਣ ਦੇ ਨਾ ਇਦਾਂ ਕਰ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਕਹੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਰਜ਼ੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਖੜੇ ਕਰਨੇ ਆ ਇੱਥੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੱਥ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਖੜੇ ਕਰਨੇ ਆ ਉਸ ਮੇਰੇ ਕਿਨਾਰੇ ਤੇ ਖੜੇ ਕਰ ਦੂਗਾ ਗੁੰਡੇ ਹਰ ਵੇਲੇ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਖੜੇ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਨਿਕਲਣਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਬੀਵੀ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਾਂ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਨਿਕਲਣਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਗੁੰਡਿਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਡਰਦਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਫੇਰ ਮੈਂ ਇਹੀ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਹਰ ਹਰ ਕੇ ਗੁੰਡਿਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਕੱਲਿਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਲੜ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਫੇਰ ਇਹੀ ਆ ਫੇ ਡਾਂਗ ਭਰਾਉਂਗਾ ਗੁਆਂਢੀ ਦੇ ਹੀ ਗੁਆਂਢੀ ਦੇ ਡਾਂਗ ਭਰਾਉਣੀ ਪੈਣੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਖੜੇ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੁਣ ਦੂਜਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਹੁਣ ਉਹ ਇਸੇ ਕਰਕੇ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਨੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਉਕਸਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਹੀਏ ਕੰਡੈਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਕੰਡੈਮ ਮੈਂ ਮੇਰੀ ਰਾਏ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਸ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਕੰਡੈਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਉਕਸਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਜਦ ਉਹ ਜਾ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਗੁਆਂਢ ਚ ਖੜ ਕੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਤੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਲਾਜ਼ਮੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਮਜ਼ਾਇਲਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਵੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਤਾਨਣੀਆਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੋਰ ਕੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਇਹ ਠੀਕ ਆ ਭਈ ਆਮ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਫਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈ ਰਿਹਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਮਾੜੀ ਗੱਲ ਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ ਤਾਂ ਜਾ ਜਲੈਂਸਕੀ ਆ ਜਾ ਇਹ ਨਾਟੋ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ 25-30 ਬਦਮਾਸ਼ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੋਏ ਆ ਇਹ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਉਕਸਾਇਆ ਕੋਈ ਇਹ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਚਾਰਾ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਫਿਰ ਹੁਣ ਇਹੀ ਰਲ ਕੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਰੌਲਾ ਪਾਈ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਰ ਇੱਥੇ ਜੀ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਰਾਈਟ ਹੋ ਐਦਾਂ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਫਲਾਨਾ ਟਿਗਾਨਾ ਆਪ ਇਹ ਯਮਨ ਚ ਕੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਰਾਈਟਸ ਦੀ ਨਾਮ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਗਰੀਬ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮਾਰਦੇ ਆ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੁਝ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਗੱਲ ਸਿਰਫ ਆ ਇਹ ਗੁੰਡੇ ਚੌਧਰੀ ਜੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਚ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਚੌਧਰੀ ਗੁੰਡੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਨਾ ਉਹ
Dr. Isyak, please unmute yourself. Unmute, uh, Dr. Isyak, unmute yourself. Yeah. First, please translate his comments, Preetam's comments. His comments are very close to my heart. And I think doing it in Punjabi gave, gave it, gives it a lot of authenticity because it yeah. comes from the heart and from the experience of Asian and African people. That the Western people have to reconcile to this new world. It will no longer accept orders from the West. NATO is an alliance of criminals who have for centuries brutalized the world. And now this is being challenged. That's the big thing. That's what he's saying. And I think he's brave enough to say that he is not willing to condemn uh, uh, Putin. Putin. I don't have the courage to say that because saying it in English is politically incorrect. But honestly, I think I sympathize with his position because I've seen the Vietnam War, a, a girl, her skin, skin flaying off because of the palm, uh, napalm bombs being uh, thrown on, on, on that peasant country, you know, for three million people wiped out of existence. So this is what the message was. And I think I totally agree. I just wanted to, uh, Maria made a grand point that who are supporting this war? I would say the European power, the European nations, North America, and the white settler colonies. That's all. Look at the rest of the world. Count the population of China and India. Then add Pakistan, add South Africa, add Iran, add many of the Arab countries and African countries. Most of the countries of the world and the people are not supporting the NATO and American led, uh, uh, you know, this encirclement, encirclement of the of the of of Russia. So this is a war which the former rulers, colonial powers of Europe, and the settler colonies are supporting and their lackeys. That's all I wanted to say. It's good. Yeah. Maria wanted us to put this in perspective. I've given you more people are against this war than the impression being created by the Western press. And yeah. I, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Maria's and uh, Sardar Zaidi's comments. I think they were both brilliant and they kind of gave, added a new dimension to the whole, whole discussion. Very good. Yeah, uh, Taylor, please. Uh, please, uh, Taylor, yeah. unmute yourself. Yeah. yeah, hello. Yeah, first I want to thank uh, Maria. Was she here? I don't wish that. No, Maria, for adding a voice of, of the Ukraine. We're in Ukraine and speaking Taiwanese for the Ukrainian people. And I want to appreciate that. That's just something that we need to hear. Secondly, this is a Ukrainian war now. The people in Ukraine, not us, not, not NATO, not Russia, not Pakistan, the people in Ukraine should have a choice. They should have a voice. And this is their decision what happens next and the people in ukraine by what i've heard from ukrainian people here in germany or in poland or anywhere else they do not want russia in charge period and if they have to join nato to prevent that they will do that but this is not their first choice but they their first choice is no russia and that is something that is just totally ignored here. Sure, you can blame NATO, you can blame Russia, you can blame everything else. What do the people in Ukraine want? And right now, 100% do not want Russia in charge. That, that's it. And you can ask any of the Ukrainians that have made it out or is still there, and they will tell you that fact. They do not want Russia in charge. Now, how are you proposed to stop Russia's aggression in Ukraine without further aggression? That is the major question. Yeah, uh, thank you. Farooq Saab, do you want to comment or something? Farooq Tariq? Okay, uh, because, uh, yeah, you were uh, writing in the chat box, so I thought. <laughs> uh, Okay, fine. I'd like to speak, uh, Batisa. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, sure, sure. 
Philips. Uh, I think we can never support war, whatever justification you or Ishtiaq Saab or other can give. There is no way we should support a war on another country. Uh, giving uh, excuses and justifications that NATO was very criminal, that is absolutely true. NATO had killed millions, that's true. But is that a justification to attack Ukraine now? People are dying, whole cities are destroyed. And here comes our friend from Canada saying that I don't even condemn that. I'm sorry, what sort of human being we are that we are supporting killing of people, uh, attacks on uh, by the planes, uh, tanks are used, and it has generated a new arm race, as uh, one of our friends said, that's absolute true. It has generated new nuclearization race. Yes, that's true. Why? Because Russia went into Ukraine on the pretext that I feel threatened. Same is true in Pakistan then, that uh, uh, Pakistan sh should be attacked by India because they see that Pakistan has nuclear weapons, they can attack. How could you support such a position that because uh, you are joining an alliance, which we don't support, we are totally against NATO, but how could you say to another country, don't join this, join that, join that, if that is true for NATO, that is true for Russia as well. So I'm totally disappointed, frustrated, really very unhappy the way our progressive Pakistanis are supporting the war efforts. I'm sorry for that. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, uh, Wahid Bhattis. <laughs> I think uh, it's, uh, I, I can only repeat what I said. I, I, don't think OPP as an as an organization or uh, several participants who who condemned NATO in any way suggested that they support the war, uh, with an exception of Pritham. He was he was very clear in his statement. Yes, that's true. What he said, uh, his statement. But I I don't think anyone said. And I think these examples are not not quite. Uh, it's been not really. It's apples and pears because. India, Pakistan, can India can attack because they feel threatened by Pakistan. It's not the similar situation. And it was not, see, if, if Ukraine would have made this choice free of other pressures in national interest that they want to join NATO or European Union or whatever. But there have been lots of powers in play. I mean, look at only the Medan movement when it started, led by fascists, all not many European politicians, American politicians going there, standing on the square, making their speeches, prompting people, supply billions and billions and billions of weapons, training the people, even now giving uh, them all this. And some, some voices like France and Germany saying that, uh, don't do that, don't do that, because this, this, this will provoke Russia. This is a direct attack on Russian security. And I mean, these kinds of things happening, uh, these are not comparable with the with India, Pakistan or, or those kinds of situations. And yes, and it is, it is not Ukrainian war. I think I am sorry, whoever believes, I, I totally believe it is not simply Russian and Ukrainian war. There are so many foreign legions fighting there. There have been all kinds of weapons openly being sent by, by European Union, by NATO, by America, by Holland, by Germany. I mean, you, they, they, they are now sending all these uh, rockets which go up to 70 kilometers and then we will send even more. And in, it's all escalation. I mean, Ukraine on its own was never any uh, competition for Russia in, in terms of war after surrendering all their weapons to to, the, to Russia, to UK and, and, and US and so on and so forth. It was no match in any kind of direct confrontation. The Ukrainian had been led this golden path, like, like uh, you are one of us, you come to us, this is all honey and milk and, and these evil Russians and, and so on and so forth. So all these things have been prompted. They have been, they have been really brought to boil. Uh, I'm again saying that he, it's, it's, it's preemptive attack, actually, yeah, okay. Uh, this, this, 
war, maybe there was more room for negotiation. Russia was trying to negotiate. It's not that they were not, but at the same time, they were threatening for the war and they went for the war. Wrong decision. Uh, it backfired also in many ways. He didn't get out of it what he thought he will get out of it. So his strategy didn't work out in that sense. But these, these things are not, we are, we are so oversimplifying the situation that, uh, oh, Ukraine wanted to join NATO, Russia didn't like it, they attacked them. I mean, it's not like that. It's not, I mean, if they have, again, I keep on saying if they are a sovereign country and they should have this choice to join whichever alliance they like, so do other countries. Why is India now threatened by American foreign minister? Because they are not condemning Russia. India is also a big sovereign country. They have their own foreign policy. Why do you threaten them that we don't want to impose sanctions if, uh, on you before you get into line and th this kind of talk? And, and Macron has been is still saying that don't go for the strategy to totally humiliate Russians. Don't humiliate them. We have humiliated Soviet Union once in history. It had a big backlash. If you humiliate such a big nation or a dictator in that sense, I mean, it will have a backlash. So what, what solution does that? I mean, all supporters of NATO can not come with any solution either, except what, uh, what you were saying is the total humiliation uh, of, of Russia and, and completely destroying when somebody said, uh, Ray, uh, Ray Sarim said, a destruction to the sense that they are never, never able militarily to stand up ever again. So you are going for humiliation and regime change. And this is not a solution. You don't humiliate nations. You can humiliate Putin, but you do not humiliate big nations like this, proud nations with rich history. I mean, it is not, look at the language, look at the manipulation, look at the reasons given for the war. It's not a Ukrainian and Russian war. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Vaisa, uh, Dr. Isak, please. Yeah, please unmute yourself, Dr. Isak. Yes, now. For my friend Farooq Tahir Sahib, how you know such explosive situations are uh, uh, diffused? I'll give an example of the Cuban war, Cuban missile crisis. You know, it would have started the Third World War. The Americans were willing, they were trigger happy people, you know, wanting to use the nuclear weapon. Bertrand Russell and all are on record saying that it is Khrushchev and the Russians who for the sake of humanity withdrew from that competition. So apply the same principle here. The, the Russians were pleading, please do not continue to encircle us, beleaguer us. We are not going to accept it. Our experience of first world war, going back to Napoleon actually, Napoleon, First World War, Second World War is terrible. Of the 50 million people killed during the Second World War in Europe, including the Germans who started the war, only the Soviet Union had 27 million casualties to bear. So if you keep that in mind, you can't simplify saying that we are against war. It's easily said, we are trying to explain why the war took place, not saying war is good or bad. Nobody is saying this. And I thought this example might help you understand that there are there was a way to avoid this war by agreeing that okay we will not let uh, uh, Ukraine could have been, yes we are not going to seek membership of NATO good enough let's not have a war that's all thank you race race Arim uh, <clears throat> I would just uh, like to put a, a little question to. Uh, you are writing all the time in chat and you are speaking down with Putin, down with Russia. Uh, I must remember at the time as I was in Mazdoor Kisan party, uh, 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 on the, there was always an opponent, the Russia, uh, I, I, I cannot understand. Uh, I have a question. Uh, there is another war uh, going on in Yemen uh, since many years. Did you uh, criticize Saudi Arab and others 
uh, with this uh, uh, intention we, we are doing today. Yeah, Farooq Tariq sir, uh, would you like to respond? Yes, if you allow me. Yeah, please. Okay. You have all I the think, rights. Yeah, okay, thank you. I think that when I oppose Putin's attack on Ukraine, that does not mean supporting Soviet Union on uh, Yemen, uh, Soviet Union's uh, uh, Saudi Arabia's attack on Yemen. Uh, it's like just that if we criticize Imran Khan, that does not mean that we are supporting Muslim League Nawaz. There must be an independent Marxist view on the issues, not siding with the camps. We are against campism. Campism has really brought us to this matter that we do not really see things in the way that has been happening rather than we are just taking sides. And that's where I am totally opposed to it. We are totally opposed to NATO. We are for the dissolution of NATO. But that's, that is that a justification that Russia should attack an imperialist country like Russia should try to take over another country? Are we supporting taking over of the country by an imperialist country? Imperialism versus imperialism. We are opposed to both. We know that NATO is much more barbarian. We know the atrocities they have committed, but opposing the big imperialist country does not mean supporting a small imperialist country. We have I, to I, I, I meant the in, intensity, with which intensity yes, we, you are investing are, by writing and by talking all okay, the time. Let, so me, speak. let me speak, please. We, to, we, I am, I was the young secretary of anti-war committee in Pakistan, and we brought thousands on the street against Iraq war, and we have always opposed war. Simple thing, don't complicate this. This is an academic issue. This is an everyday life issue as well. We do not want people to die because there are some reasons for the war. We have to oppose Marxist. As Marxist, we are totally opposed to war particularly war between these imperialist countries. We're not happy that imperialist countries are attacking each other. We want a peaceful world where we could work on our, on our issues. We could defend the lives of ordinary people. Now here, we cannot just geographical positions and justifications on those that we are supporting. I, I felt very strongly initially when uh, Batista was speaking, that he's somehow trying to justify. He said he's not, but ultimately, Shiaqsab, when you heard our Canadian friend, you are very clear. This is my heart. This is what I wanted to say. I did the courage to say. So what does that mean? That you support, you're supporting power on no, Ukraine. No, 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 no. Here in this webinar, here, no, okay. Here in this webinar, I think the first thing we demand stop the war. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Farooq Tariq Sahib. Yes. Yeah, Farooq uh, Tariq Sahib. Yes, Thank yes. Uh, OPP's official point of view is we are against any war, and especially uh, in this context, aggression on Ukraine. We are with the people of Ukraine, but we are discuss discussing here the dichotomy, Western dichotomy. So we are not discussing here Ukraine, uh, you know, the plight of the people of Ukraine or what destruction has been doing over there by, uh, by, by Russia. And we are not supporting Putin or Russia at all. Uh, this is official statement. And then uh, Dr. Isyak, please. Once again, I mean, this is like dragging the point. I don't, I don't think we are here to win a point against Farooq Tariq or he against me. I accept him as a comrade and I accept his concern for peace as well. The difference is there is a difference between analysis and just a moral statement. You are making a, making a moral statement no sensible person will disagree with. But the hard thing 
to do is to understand why wars do happen and when they happen you have to look at the reasons and then find a way how to resolve it i have given you the example of henry kissinger i have given you the example of putin and the russian foreign minister proposing that please do not do this because if you do you leave us no choice but to take preemptive action did the uh, uh ukrainian government respond to it no so that is where the war broke out and its consequences are terrible no doubt so i think this will not be <laughs> resolved today you are taking a position where no sensible person would disagree with you the difficult thing is to explain why it is happening and when it is happening how it can be ended as i was telling you of the indian uh, you know this uh, uh, young journalist saying the war can stop in an hour if the ukrainians say that okay our plan to join nato is given up we want peace in this region because there is a theory that if your security threatens the freedom of your neighbor the neighbor is bound to react you must read that as well so that's the problem of politics analysis is very different from taking a moral position your moral position and mine are the same yeah thank you I, i i just wanted to add to that i think uh, uh, I mean, and we we all know Comrade Farooq Tariq for for long, long, long time, and highly, highly respect him. And I think it's mutual. He he respects OPP and us as well. But see, there is absolutely, if there is any misunderstanding, let me clarify. No one here is supporting, at least from OPP, that one country takes over or Russia kind of takes over Ukraine. No. see that today the, the situation has been evolved such that even if zelensky wants to stop the war he has to get approval of nato and biden to to do anything any step it's not that he can independently can take uh, take take any this kind of choice so we 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 are not in favor of one country taking over another and you have you hear different extreme uh, opinions here and we are trying to put this in a in a perspective and again the topic as as uh, amir rana rightfully pointed out was to highlight the dichotomy the jisko doglapan urdu mein humne kaha hai ke jo west ka nato ka doglapan hai is jang mein usko expose karna ke we wanted to expose this this double morale double standards of of west and nato when they are talking about the way they are selling or marketing this war to the world and and that was the thrust of the discussion which we tried to expose it doesn't mean like you yourself said agar imran ko support hai to uska matlab ye hai ki usko kar rahe hain usko kar rahe hain so we are exactly saying the same thing if we are criticizing nato or uh, it doesn't mean we are we are going for this uh, i think if there is any other question uh, yeah, uh, taylor wants to add something Do you want to add something, Taylor? Uh, you have yeah. raised your hand. Yes, I want to address uh, uh, Hamid's uh, comment there. That, uh, Russia making the the comment that if Ukraine stated they didn't want to be a part of NATO, they should have said so, and Russia wouldn't invade it. Actually, it was stated before the invasion that Ukraine had no plans on joining NATO. Period. They had no plans. and they still do not have a plan to join nato they want to join the european union because they're going to need assistance when the war is over if the war is ever over but there was no plan to join nato from the ukrainian side that was russian propaganda that you heard and you didn't hear the other side you totally ignored the ukrainian position in the ukrainian people and that 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 kind of torched me a little bit no offense to you personally but you have to listen to both sides and when the ukrainian people and the ukrainian president says we are not going to join nato there is no plans to join nato and russia invades anyway because they said i never people, heard them say that i'm well, sorry sir I, I, I have to i have to i have to interrupt here sorry i'm taking that privilege uh, mr taylor i would just request you to after this discussion to go to the internet just go to the internet what you are saying is historically incorrect because i heard it i heard it wait wait wait, 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 wait let me finish one sentence 
Yushchenko and Yulia Tomoshenko, when she was prime minister, they made a request to NATO that Ukraine wants to join NATO. And they were replaced. So Sorry? that's the same. The yeah, people but, replaced but, them. But hang on, replaced. But but a government, an elected government, made this request, and you saying they never said that? No, I'm saying present government had said but that. Never, oh, oh, my you goodness. can go back a hundred years and say, well, this one said that, this one said that. That is no longer fact. That, that is, what are we doing today? Putin didn't invade Ukraine 30 <laughs> years ago. He invaded this year. Uh, excuse, year. excuse me, there is one thing more. In, two, uh, in August uh, 2008, in Bucharest, when the NATO was uh, their uh, conference, they have invited Georgia and Ukraine that if we will extend the membership, if they they will request. That that's was true. 2008. That's true. Yes. But Ukraine did not accept that. And did not, the Wahid had just told you. You can you can read and you can. Yeah. Read. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, we we you don't want uh, we second. don't want uh, cross talk uh, one by one, please. And then, yeah, uh, Dharam Rihani sahab, uh, you, you have raised your hand. Please unmute yourself and then talk. Okay, can you hear? Yeah, please. Okay. I just want to go ahead with some something else. Uh, uh, I think uh, commotions are very high. And I want to shift, first of all, to Sri Lanka. And then I'll come back to the topic. Yeah, uh, big, uh, Sri Lanka had a war long-lasting war, which was won by later on by these ruling uh, family members, uh, Jaya, uh, Raja Pakshe and co. And this month, you've been hearing all the news that this country is, on, is bankrupt. Yeah? They have defaulted in paying their, uh, the loans which they took from the international bodies. They could not repay them and the Rajapaksha family has fled the country. Yeah? People are on the streets, they are hungry. Now there are two types of wars. Yeah? One is with the bombs, another is unseen bombs where people die of hunger due to drought, or natural calamities, calamities and man-made calamities like this. Yeah? I come back, there are uh, 12 countries at least right now which are on the brink of such catastrophe. Which, which country, these countries will be defaulting <laughs> the payment of their debts, international debts in, the, in this year alone. Ukraine is one of them. It has a total debt of $20 billion and it has to pay 1.2 in September payback, which will not pay not be able to pay back. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be given some grace period. They will be given free weapons, no doubt, yeah. to kill the Russians, get their own people killed. And Mr. Taylor was very sympathetic to the Pau Pua people of the world. Oh, I admire his fears. Uh, should keep it to himself before he, okay. I come back to the topic. These uh, things do not help. We have to think what happened actually. Ukraine was uh, growing gas from Russia and was not paying them. Russia has wants to pay the money for the debts the, the they took from the international bodies, but they have been stopped by. Uh, you know, the international banking system, yeah. So this is another aspect of the war, the crime by the US dominated economic system. You have to consider this. Yeah. End of thank the call. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dharam, uh, Dharam Rihani Bhai. Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, honestly speaking, this is one of the most uh, best 
dialogues uh, we have ever uh, held uh, because there are a lot of difference of opinion and the difference of opinion for us actually it is uh, it is very important especially among the comrades among the people who uh, sometimes it looks like they uh, they think in the same direction uh, they, uh, but uh, again i would like to reiterate that we are against overseas progressive pakistanis are against this war or any war, but we all we also are, um, are against uh, one-sided, uh, like Mahid Bhatia said, that one-sided advertisement or promotion. Because at this moment, uh, Taylor, we are only hearing the Western media. We have banned any other um, media or even Russian television or otherwise, we cannot hear from them. We cannot come to any conclusion that what is happening on the other side, what they think. What they think can, be, can only be told us by the Western media. So I want uh, um, uh, this discussion, the formal discussion to conclude and we would continue uh, uh, later. Uh, I want Wahid Bhatti to please uh, uh, culminate this dis official discuss discussion so that I could uh, uh, stop uh, recording it and uh, uh, stop uh, uh, live streaming. Wahid Bhatti, please. Please unmute yourself. Sorry, just a couple of concluding sentences. Uh, I think, first of all, really thank you, everyone, uh, for such a such a <laughs> intense participation, really lively participation with a lot of heart and emotions and arguments. And uh, on some issues, hey, let's uh, agree to disagree. There's no shame in it. It's fantastic. I think it uh, kind of we learn more by challenging each other. And it opens up new perspectives, new arguments. So it has been... Uh, a fantastic exercise. We will take lots of uh, criticism and points with us. And maybe we are wrong on some of the points. It, it's very well possible. Uh, we never said our truth is absolute truth. No, uh, we, we also analyze this world. We look through the same lens as you guys do, does and everyone does. And everyone comes with a kind of uh, different analysis, different conclusion. But this has been excellent. And thank you very much to Khalid Amit Farooqi. He put us on the cross today and uh, <laughs> got away, but uh, it was dedicated to him. And thank you, Ella, for being there. Uh, thank you, Maria, for being there. And uh, everyone did uh, did a fantastic job. And with this, we will, I think, end the, the, the formal part of the discussion and stay a few minutes on the line. If uh, people still want to get some dust out of their lungs, they feel free. <laughs> Please do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, this, um, uh, just I want to share again that uh, you can uh, watch this discussion and uh, its report on our uh, website later after a little trimming and editing without uh, editing any uh, opposite, um, uh, you know, uh, point of view. So thank you very much from Overseas Progressive Pakistanis, the Netherlands. And uh, I appreciate that you have joined. And I appreciate that you would uh, take uh, uh, our, our mission forward uh, while um, uh, attracting more people uh, to this platform's discussion. Thank you very much.